Welcome to selfprinciple.org. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm so glad you joined me today. So today's topic is all about what is the optimal amount of fruits and vegetables you ought to be having every single day. Let's take a look at the latest research to see if research can answer this question and how you can take some of the action points and apply them to your life right now. Before we get started, it's important to have a little bit of background on how big of a problem getting enough fruits and vegetables really is. It turns out only about 1 in 10 U.S. adults actually gets enough fruits and vegetables that's recommended. Now, this is not without trying. There's been so many campaigns over the years. In the 1990s, if you remember, it was the five-a-day campaign, eat five fruits and vegetables per day. In 2007, the campaign changed and it was more about fruits and veggies, more matters campaign. And then in the 2015-2020, the five-a-day was modified a little bit to state that it was really around 2.5 servings of vegetables and two cups of fruit daily. Now, if we go across the world and we look at the recommendations, they're actually quite different from ours. The ones that are similar is the World Health Organization, the World Cancer Research Fund, and the National Health Services of England all state five servings per day of fruits and vegetables. On the other hand, Denmark recommends six servings per day, and Australia has a whopping eight and a half servings of fruits and vegetables per day as a recommendation. One of the things that I always hear is how difficult it is to get fruits and vegetables. They're too expensive, they're hard to find, and so forth. Well, when it comes to cost, if you look at all sorts of combinations in terms of how to get enough fruits and vegetables, on average, it would cost about $2.10 to $2.60 per day to get the recommended amounts of fruits and vegetables for one person. So cost is not a barrier. Being able to make the right choices, having accessibility to fruits and vegetables is definitely a barrier. But that's not where the barrier stops. There are so many challenges we're faced with right now. For example, only about 55% of the people live in countries where they have accessibility to fruits and vegetables. And it's estimated by 2050, 1.5 billion people in the world will live in countries and areas where there will be an insufficient supply of fruits and vegetables. But what makes this whole situation incredibly sad and incredibly disheartening is that when you look at our current food production, one third of food produced around the world is wasted. This is why at Self Principle, we put such an emphasis on a whole foods plant-based diet because not only is it healthy for you, it's healthy for your kids, it's healthy for your family, but we also know it's healthy and sustainable for the planet. And that's part of the reason why we advocate going towards a whole food plant-based diet. No matter where you are, eating more plants does wonders for your body, for your mind, and for the future of our planet. All right, so let's dive into the data. In this particular case, we're going to take a look at this new study, which is a population-based study. They looked at two cohorts, and in addition, they did a meta-analysis of 26 additional studies. So there's a lot of data here. And what they did was they looked at all of the previous studies that were published around the recommendation to say what's different and what has changed to come up with the ultimate recommendation that's available as of now. So the study design of this study was, they looked at the nurses' health study population. Remember, those are about 122,000 female registered nurses who are ages 30 to 55, and they're mostly healthy. The next portion was the health professionals' follow-up study. And this was about 41,000 participants, ages 40 to 75. They had also a 30-year follow-up. So now you have two groups that they were able to follow up for 30 years to be able to come up with these recommendations and these outcomes on what happens to your health and wellness. And what's fascinating about this particular study is they used a validated food frequency questionnaire, which we all have issues with, but they went back every two to four years to update that questionnaire. So that data is very solid. We've talked about some of the other studies where it's a 17 year or later follow-up but they only had one time they assessed what people ate. I can't even remember what I ate last week, much alone remember what I ate 17 years ago. So in this follow-up study, there was follow-ups every two to four years. All right, so what did they find? What can you really learn from 
all of this follow-up, 30 years of follow-up, and making sure they're going back and asking them what they're eating every two to four years. So what they found was that five servings of fruits and vegetables compared to a baseline of about two servings, if you followed the five servings daily, you had about a 13% lower risk of all-cause mortality. You had about a 12% lower risk of dying from heart disease or stroke. You had a 10% lower risk of getting cancer. And you had a 35% lower risk of getting respiratory diseases such as things like COPD or, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But interestingly, if you were one of those overachievers and you ended up eating more than five servings of fruits and vegetables, you didn't have any additional benefits. And then finally, the most important question is they found that the best benefit for things like cancer, heart disease, respiratory disease, all cause mortality. The best benefit was seen with two servings of fruits and three servings of vegetables. Now, as we look at vegetables, what was interesting was that not all vegetables had the same benefit. So the vegetables that actually saw a decrease in your risk of dying from the different diseases we talked about and the risk of developing diseases were things like non-starchy vegetables. So those were like cruciferous vegetables, like spinach, lettuce, and kale. And the things or the vegetables that did not have a reduction in all-cause mortality were things like starchy vegetables, things like peas, corn, potatoes, and also fruit juices. Now, the question is, why weren't potatoes of a benefit? Is it possible it's the way those potatoes were being eaten? Were they being fried or etc.? And basically making it so the health benefits of potatoes weren't there. Don't know. But it's possible that there may have been other things there, but that's what the data showed. Now, of course, you have to keep in mind, this is not a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. This is an observational study. So the most it can say is there's an association. It can't say there's a causation. And of course, food frequency questionnaires, they have limitations, but at the same time, the fact that this is 30 years, the fact that they went back every two to four years gives us a lot more confidence. And as always, you have to remember, is it possible there could be some kind of residual confounders in there, something that we didn't think about that could be affecting the results? Absolutely. And there was this concept that the authors brought up of reverse causation. This was a concept that maybe people who were getting the diagnosis of illness, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, were then turning around and eating more fruits and vegetables. So you weren't seeing that in healthy people, you were seeing that in sick people who already had diseases. If healthy people were doing that, maybe the results would have been even greater. That being the case, what is the bottom line that you can take home right now and start working to apply in your own life? Well, just a few basic things. First, the lowest mortality was seen with five servings of fruits and vegetables per day, specifically three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruits per day. And there was no additional benefit of going beyond that. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. It just means that you won't necessarily get a benefit for the things that they looked at. Other stuff was that not all vegetables were equal. Starchy vegetables, such as peas, corn, potatoes, did not have any benefit in all-cause mortality. Neither did fruit juices. Versus cruciferous vegetables, citrus fruits, berries, and carrots definitely showed benefits. So there you have it. Very simple, five servings of fruits and vegetables to add on to your daily lifestyle pattern. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this really important topic. As always, I would love to hear your comments, your thoughts below. Please don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate your support on it. And I look forward to seeing you next time.